American History X is one of my friend's favorite movies, and he was telling me that he was watching a clip from the film on YouTube, but he was kind of surprised reading the comments. And I said, let me guess, it's full of racists, right? And he was like, yeah, but the film, you know, it's very anti-racist. Edward Norton's character, Derek, isn't meant to be right. And he was like, I don't think they understood it. I don't get it. How could they miss that? Now, the reason for this is, take a look at this scene and how it depicts Norton's character. It's crap, I don't buy that for a minute. Calling a riot an irrational expression of rage, that's such a cop-out. It's opportunism at its worst. It's, it's a bunch of people grabbing any excuse they can find to go and loot a store, nothing more. You know, the fact that these people ripped off the stores in their own communities, all that reflects is the degree to which these people have absolutely no respect for the law at all, and certainly no concept of, like, community or, or civic responsibility. He's passionate, he's charismatic, and he seems intelligent, even reasonable. The people around him who disagree either look flummoxed and passive, or like they're just morally outraged. I, I don't think that the tape showed that at all. Oh, you didn't think so, huh? And what, you're an authority, Ma? <laughs> Murray, what do you think? Look who's talking about respect here, Mr. Junior KKK. Oh, what? But they certainly don't seem logical or cool. More broadly speaking, throughout the film, Derek, on the other hand, actually does look pretty cool. I mean, goddamn, look at him go. It's not just the basketball and the impassioned speeches. There's that scene where he pulls a gun out of his underwear and then dabs on the haters. Uh, for real though, that curb stomp scene was pretty brutal. Born in the USA is a song by Bruce Springsteen, a song that Reagan's team wanted to use during his re-election campaign. And it's easy to see why, right? It sounds bombastic and patriotic. The line that is sung the hardest and repeated the most is, I mean, damn, it almost gets me in the mood to crack a cold one, dig into some apple pie, and grope my sister. In a different song, you might think that line is yelled in proud, nationalistic fervor. However, if you have a read through the lyrics, it's actually about a man that is completely lost, and who has been abandoned by his country and thrown to the waste. Born down in a dead man's town, the first kick I took was when I hit the ground. Yeah, straight away, doesn't sound very, woo, America. It's a pretty harsh critique of an unsympathetic USA who treat their veterans and the lower class like shit. It's actually kind of a cool subversion, right? It's like making a meta point about the country. You know, like the song itself, the American dream is kind of a showy facade. Real life is a lot darker. America's future rests in a thousand dreams inside your hearts. It rests in the message of hope in songs of a man so many young Americans admire, New Jersey's own Bruce Springsteen. As you can see, the message really got through to people. Any sort of metaphor or allegory or just a deeper message that a creator intends to convey through their art can often get lost due to the more shallow, aesthetic, guttural nature of that art or how it immediately strikes the audience. And importantly, how that interacts with their pre-existing biases. And I've come to understand over the last couple of years that this is a really common thing. X-Men doesn't just refer to your past boyfriends, it's also a series of comics focused on a group of superhero mutants. And I remember having a really frustrating conversation with someone a few years ago, because I said something along the lines of, the X-Men as a fictional concept is pretty obviously sympathetic towards the plight of minorities. I thought that was a pretty non-controversial thing to say, because it's constantly reminding us of stuff like, hey, don't judge others because they're different, how that prejudice can be a really ostracizing, destructive thing, but also like be proud to be yourself, Shit like that. Perfection. But then the person I was talking to was all like, nah man, you're reading way too much into this. So I went and looked that shit up to make sure I wasn't insane, to see if anyone else felt the same. Because I'm not a huge fan, like I haven't poured through the comics, I've just watched some of the cartoons and movies, and it seemed like really blatant to me, even from just that. And in my research I discovered that my interpretation was yeah, pretty reasonable. And quite probably that allegory of the struggles of the X-Men reflecting those of minorities in the real world was something the writers were explicitly aware of. I mean, this is from Stan Lee himself. It seems to me that a story without a message is like a man without a soul. None of us lives in a vacuum. None of us is untouched by the everyday events about us. Let's lay it right on the line. Bigotry and racism are among the deadliest social ills plaguing the world today. I think the bigotry allegory isn't a stretch. It's pretty clear in my opinion. I think at the end of the day, in a broad audience, for a good chunk of them, what jumps at them isn't the intended messages, it's just the cool flashy powers and stuff. 
and that's very malleable. Like, it'll mold and shape around whatever beliefs they already hold. I found that this happens really often with video games. Maybe because it's a relatively new medium with a player base that tends to skew quite young. Or maybe because I tend to read more gaming discussions so I'm more uh, exposed to it. But whatever the reason, like damn, the amount of times that I'll see in the wild in YouTube or on Twitter comments, someone complaining about politics and games with a fucking Bioshock or Fallout avatar on their profile is insane. I guess when they play Bioshock, all they see is like a cool underwater dystopian adventure with wacky bad guys and that's it. Now, even something like The Witcher 3, a game that is often heralded and put on a pedestal by people who rail against political agendas in their games, you know, the get woke go broke types on the internet. But again, the game has a lot of like pretty obvious themes rooted in like minority persecution and prejudice and those kinds of ideas. So yeah, I mean, I guess it confuses me when like super anti-SJW reactionary types are really into The Witcher. Hey, maybe if Geralt was a woman with shaved sides and blue hair, maybe they'd be less receptive. This goes back to how a lot of people infer meaning through pure aesthetics. You know, there's no black people in the game and it doesn't literally spell out for you that, oh, you know, discrimination is bad. So it can't be forcing any woke ideas, right? You know, I genuinely wonder sometimes that if Animal Farm wasn't so famous as an example of political commentary, then a bunch of people would legitimately just think it's a cute story about farm animals. Uh, this isn't just like me being like, oh, look how stupid people are. Well, kinda. And I'm not completely above this kind of thing either, where I'll have like a shallow reaction to something simply because of the way it's packaged. Simply because of the way it's packaged, you know? No, I've mentioned before that I find terms like feminism or toxic masculinity just really cringe. And it's largely, I think, because of the aesthetics around it. You know, the words themselves, the types of people that are quick to use them. The actual concepts don't bother me. This is why I've come to realize that uh, as a creator, you're constantly having to pull like this crazy balancing act where you have to be subtle enough that uh, you don't come across as preachy or antagonistic. You know, no one wants to have something explained to them really explicitly in an on-the-nose way in a piece of entertainment, right? You don't want to feel like you're being talked down to. But at the same time, you have to be aware that with subtlety, you run the risk that the essence of your message gets completely missed by a significant chunk of the audience. And the aesthetics around your work plays a big role in that. And look, there's no right or wrong answer here. It just depends on your values, how important the message you want to convey is to you. It's just stuff to keep in mind as a consumer and a creator. <sighs> okay. Now, I have debated whether or not I want to do this last bit, but I'm just going to go ahead with it. Um, I've never been quite this vulnerable on this channel. Um, but, you know, everything that I've talked about in this video, you know, about how, like, external, aesthetic... Um, superficial, shallow things um, affect how people perceive that thing. Um, this actually personally affects me um, on a day-to-day -day basis. People judge me based on something, um, something largely inconsequential. They dismiss me and my humanity um, simply because I'm on a trial version of Windows. Oh, no, Am I the only living vicariously to that fucking extent? Activate your windows, or dude. Your self -work? Okay, this stigma, this ostracization has got to end, okay? This is some bullshit. My content is not worth any less because of a small watermark on the bottom right of my screen, okay? Okay, anyway, um, memes aside, this was just a video about some random thoughts I've been having. So I guess final takeaways, even though it sounds obvious, try to examine things a little critically, look past the surface, look for the substance. And if you're someone who creates art, try to keep in mind the shallow things and how a broader audience might interpret your work. Anyway, like, uh, check out my other video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.